Claude Mackay's poem, The Tropics in New York, is structured in three stanzas. Each stanza is a quadrain. The rhyme scheme of each quadrain is AB AB. The first stanza is filled with the names of luscious, exotic fruit from a land other than America. It ends with the festive outdoor activity, a parish fair, which would have been a social event that gathered together a dispersed agricultural community. It is the sort of event that a stranger in a strange land would remember longingly. The speaker mentions a window which serves a dual purpose. Fruits bought at a market in the city would be put on a window sill to ripen. But the window is also a vehicle for the speaker's memory to be cast outside, leading into this stanza's memories of the tropical landscape. The warm nostalgia the speaker related toward his homeland in the first two stanzas now makes him sad in his longing for it. Not being able to live there, he feels helpless and alienated in his new surroundings. The hunger in line 11 ties the end of the poem to the luscious fruits at the beginning. The title of this poem is a contradiction, a clash of landscapes. New York City in the 1920s thrived with diverse immigrant cultures, all living within a few city blocks of each other. Just as diverse were the fruits, vegetables and other fruits sold on the street or from merchants' carts. The narrator of the poem arranges an exotic grocery list on his windowsill for us to view. Cocoa pods and alligator pears, tangerines and mangoes and grapefruit. Almost all of these foods are not native to American culture. And in the second stanza, the speaker reveals neither is he. Although McCoy does not describe the urban New York landscape in detail, we can imagine the harsh contrast of what the speaker sees looking through his downtown apartment window and what the exotic food reminds him of, trees laden by low singing rills and dewy dawns and mystical blue skies. The Jamaican-born speaker finds himself in a new landscape but recalls old memories triggered by the discovery of this exotic fruit on his windowsill. The odd contrast between the exotic fruit set against the New York urban landscape inspires the speaker to remember and long for his homeland. After he surveys the tropical arrangement of fruits set in his windowsill, the speaker looks out the window into what should be downtown New York but instead sees scenes from his childhood in Jamaica. Through this window into the past, he sees fruit trees laden by low singing rills and dewy dawns. The speaker of Mackay's poem fills his apartment with fragrant ginger and bright green bananas, sweet mangoes and tart pink grapefruit inside thick rinds. He fills his senses with tropics, bringing memories of mystical blue skies in benediction over nun-like hills. By the end of the second stanza, the speaker is overcome with weight of his emotions and his memories flood him with longing. A stranger in a strange landscape, the speaker first finds comfort in the familiar fruits he has placed on his window sill to ripen, but soon he is overcome by the memories they evoke, as well as feelings of alienation and loneliness. Like the alligator peers strangely out of place against a backdrop of brownstone apartments, taxis and fire escapes, the speaker is alien to his environment. A wave of longing through his body swept and hungry for the old familiar ways, he turned aside and bowed his head and wept. McCoy describes his longing as a hunger connecting the theme of loneliness to the exotic foods that first triggered the powerful childhood memories.